So Dan, as we just talked about, all the Canadian banks really reported from some pretty solid Q2 earnings. However, you were really surprised by national banks' um, results. Why was that? Well, you know, in, in this current low rate environment, it's difficult for the banks to maintain and manage interest margin, you know, as the asset yields uh, keep getting repriced lower and lower and with funding costs uh, holding about constant. So the fact that National Bank can maintain its uh, net interest margin fairly steadily, they've only lost four basis points in the last three quarters, uh, is really kind of a testament to how disciplined they are in the pricing and, and their ability to, uh, you know, keep keep the top line growing with, uh, with the slowing loan growth that we're seeing. Um, another factor would be the asset quality. Their uh, gross impaired loans to total loans is about 0.4% of total loans, uh, which is the lowest among the Canadian banks, and we continue to be impressed by that. Um, and they're also the only one with uh, loan loss reserves that are in excess of those gross impaired loans, so they have plenty of coverage uh, if they all happen to go bad. Now, um, oh, sorry. The, uh, the, you know, so with that solid margin, with that pristine asset quality, uh, the earnings uh, from the Canadian banking segment have, have been very good. Uh, they're getting good uh, pickup from the uh, better trading revenue as well as from their wealth management area. So all in all, it was a, it was a very good quarter for them, which was, uh, you know, given the macro, like I said, given the macroeconomic factors, it was, was a bit of a surprise. And um, just to touch on wealth management, in the past few years, National Bank has made some changes to its wealth management structure. So you c can you talk about those changes and what they mean for shareholders? Yeah, I think the biggest one would be the sale of Matt Can inve uh, Matt Investment Management to Fear Capital. Uh, in exchange for selling that to Fear Capital, they received a 35% stake in, uh, in Fear Capital. Um, Fear is the third largest uh, asset manager in Canada right now. So it, what it does is that you know customers of National Bank uh, who come to, to National uh, for wealth management services are basically referred to Fear Capital. Uh, uh, National Bank basically owns part of the company, so they have incentive to, to refer those customers there. Um, and it's it's a nice way for a smaller company like National Bank to be able to realize good growth in. Uh, in a, in a good company like Fair Capital with, with the third largest uh, because if they had to do it on their own buying other smaller wealth managers, um, they always run the risk of uh, losing those uh, personnel that, that made those companies successful, those target companies successful. So uh, we think that's good for shareholders and that they that na National Bank doesn't have to deal with that potential risk in terms of expanding its wealth management area. So uh, you know, all in all, that's you know, we, we saw it as a positive for both Fear Capital and for National. And Dan, you recently published a piece that appeared on Morningstar.com and we also ran it on Morningstar.ca and it outlined your concerns for the Canadian housing market. Now in this piece, you specifically talked about National Bank and you're concerned about them and you feel like they are exposed. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we, we, we took a look at the Canadian housing market. We, you know, we, we see the affordability of homes coming down. We see the the, the home to uh, uh, average income coming up, coming up, uh, making it less affordable for uh, for the average Canadian for to buy a house. Um, and and it seems to us that the housing market is a bit frothy. Uh, the, the banks have defended their lending practices by basically saying, look, our loan to value ratios. Are very are very good. They're in the you know it's around 50 percent, and uh, we kind of took a took a view of that and, and said, well, how does that compare to what the U.S. experienced back in 2007? And surprisingly, uh, the, the how low the values for the average U.S. bank at that time was about 50 percent. Uh, so we took a deeper look at the distributions of the loan to values and how that worked out between the Canadian banks based on what the CMHC was reporting and based on what the U.S. Census was reporting on the U.S. side back then. And we found that more of the, the distribution of the loan to values was more on the high side for the Canadian bank than the U.S. was. So what we did was we stress test uh, each of the bank's uh, portf uh, residential portfolios, um, taking account of what, what was insured by the CMHC and what was uninsured. And in looking at the uninsured portion, uh, it looked like National Bank was more exposed, uh, generally because not so much that you know they're making.
making bad loans or whatever. It's just that they have less capital or, or have less tangible capital than some of the other uh, bigger banks that they that they compete with. So on that basis, they looked a little bit worse than uh, you know maybe some of the other banks. So it, 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 in terms of uh, in terms of it, it's mostly in terms of uh, tangible capital and the potential hit to tangible capital that a uh, a severe housing correction may cause. Okay, so I guess this is something we're going to have to keep our eye on. And my last question for you, Dan, I feel like sometimes National Bank gets overlooked by investors because they're going up against giants like TD, RBC. So is there some, something about National Bank that stands out to you or gives them a competitive edge over the other banks? You know, uh, you, have to, you have to keep in mind that National Bank largely is largely competes in Quebec. Uh, they're, they're the bank in Quebec. Um, they're slowly, you know, trying to get more into the other provinces. Not that they don't operate in the other provinces, but, uh, you know, they're, they're very uh, uh, Quebec-centered. Um, you know, they appear to be, you know, what, I guess one of the positives, again, I'll allude to the, the credit management risk. They do that very well, um, better than peers. And it generally trades at a discount to the other, to the other bigger banks, um, whether that's because of liquidity, because it's smaller, or because of, uh, you know, the fact that it's uh, Quebec-centered. You know, I, I think they kind of get penalized for that, probably unfairly for it. So, you know, our fair value estimate on national is $85. Um, they're currently trading in the upper 70s. So, you know, that $85 is at a 10.4 time multiple. Uh, they're currently trading probably nine and a half multiple, while your average Canadian bank is uh, probably eleven and a half, maybe even twelve times. So, um, seems to be that, that you know, if you want to put them all on an equal basis, that there's some upside to uh, to being an investor in national national bank. And and as well, they've been uh, increasing their dividend very very steadily here uh, uh, over several years. Tons of useful useful information there for investors. Uh, thanks so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank mm -hmm. you.